Good evening, everyone. We'll start with uh, English questions for Roger. We'll start with George, please. Hi, Roger. Uh, well done. Today. Hello. Um, you looked pretty good out there, considering you've not played for more than a year and had a couple of knee surgeries. How was the difference kind of transitioning from practice to coming back to the match court, and just generally, how are you feeling out there? <coughs> <clears throat> Sorry. Um, no, I felt actually really good and relaxed uh, last night, even though it was like the night before, you know, and then in the morning I started to think about it and I don't know, you can just like feel it like you're getting more tense again and you, I don't know, not, not that you can start worrying, you know, but you're actually more getting more excited than anything else. But uh, in practice, I was feeling just a bit, you know, uh, I don't know, just like this was not just another training day you know and I think this is the biggest difference you know is that you you care very much about the outcome of the game whereas in practice you couldn't care less really I mean for me anyhow uh, I know some guys do but uh, so the nerves are just not there you know and um, and I think this is what I felt throughout the game as well because uh, you want to try to play free and then you want to try out things and then it's a game and uh, and you can't really do it and I don't know, but uh, overall I was really excited and happy the way I played. Um, I mean, Dan was a, a tough first round, I thought, but the good thing probably was that I practiced with him the last couple of weeks. So I really knew what to expect. It's just that uh, uh, when we were practicing, the court was faster in the past, so this was slower, and I knew it could be a little bit tricky how to construct a point against him on a, on a slow court. But uh, look, it felt great to be out there again. Um, regardless of the outcome, losing in straight, winning in straight, winning in three. It's going to give me a lot of answers and um, interesting is going to be to see how I feel tomorrow. Um, but right now I feel actually pretty good, so I'm, I'm really pleased. Howard, please. Hi, Roger. Uh, Hi. After, after being in that competitive environment for the first time in a while, what would you say, if anything, surprised you about yourself out there either from a, um, a stroke standpoint or a mental in the midst of a match and decision making standpoint is there anything yeah, I, that surprised you about how it yeah i mean I, I was very happy with uh how i was able to handle the tough moments i didn't feel like you know my my game started to wobble uh the the more important the points got i think i was able to um to play how i wanted to play so i think that's always a great sign and a, gr a great feeling to have um because especially just coming out of practice you know and then in, in practice you it doesn't matter if you miss the backhand down the line you know being down break point but here it matters uh, a lot uh, so i think not serving any double faults in my first match back over two hours and 20 minutes. I think that's a sign that, you know, uh, I don't know, the knee is doing really well on the serve, which I think is cr is crucial. Um, I realized and uh, that I had to come forward more. And, you know, the, as the match went on longer, I was able to produce that and really come to the net more and take chances up there. And that obviously stresses the body more because you're trying to make those plays instead, instead of just staying back and rallying, which can be sometimes a little bit easier in my mind. So I think the, um, which I was really happy about was that I was um, really explosive actually, even though of course I was going in, in swings of, being tired again and then feeling better again and uh but overall i must say i'm, I'm really pleased um it was a good performance against a great player and um felt great to be back on a match court russell please what was the toughest part of the whole experience roger i don't mean a particular situation in the match but was it fitness was it decision making I, f I thought the decision making was okay. You know, I knew what I wanted to do, but couldn't always produce it just because of the, the lack of matches maybe. But then again, uh, because I was practicing a lot uh, as well before hitting with Dan the last few weeks now, uh, you know, I did a lot of two on ones uh, this year. And you know, when you play two on ones, you always go end up changing uh, directions. You know, you go from cross court to down the line and so forth. So I, so I thought that was really good, you know, overall. Um, and then the part that you know gets a little bit more tricky is the um, 
sometimes the easy shots you know i would miss a, quite a few easy shots from time to time but i feel like that was part of the footwork you know those little adjustment steps that you just have to take at the very end and uh, with a long match you, you get a little wobble going sometimes and but i still think it, i tried to do the right thing i just then misfired you know and i think that's uh, natural that that's going to happen from time to time so overall i'm um, i'm okay with that you know um and you would think that that only gets better over time Simon Briggs. Yeah, hi. I just wondered about um, the fact that you've done a couple of trading blocks with Dan now. Is there something about his game that you quite enjoy being across the net from? Uh, hey, Simon. Um, yeah, I mean, I think usually I pick hitting partners depending on their character too, I think, uh, more than their game, because if you make it into the top 250, I'm sorry, you're a good enough player, you know what I mean? You, you can do everything. Um, of course, you need somebody who shows up to every practice, not somebody who doesn't care one day and then not the next. But with me, that is very rarely that, that anybody would ever do that to me. And Dan's an easygoing guy. I enjoy talking to him. He's also somebody when you sit on the side of the, the chair, you know, um, well, we, we always chat and then eventually we're like, well, we got to play again you know we can't just keep on chatting and it's nice when you go through training blocks um like this that you have somebody who actually is uh, interesting to talk to uh, there's nothing worse than somebody who doesn't say a word for two weeks you know so from that standpoint it's always fun with him and uh, and plus he's uh, getting better and better he's a good player uh, like you said i think he mixes it up and he's um from that from that standpoint it's not every day the same match and uh, that's why I think it was really good preparation for me to, to play with him and that's what I told him at the net as well I appreciated everything you know we did together the last few weeks Matt Fatterman please Hey Roger uh, can you talk about what your recovery routine is you know for the next 24 hours is it a lot of ice a lot of Advil what, what happens now uh, in order to get yourself ready to play the next match um you're talking to an old school guy you know so i don't i've done one ice bath and i didn't like it so i'm not going to do that again um i don't just take painkillers for fun i only take them when i really have to don't feel like that's the case tonight um i haven't taken painkillers probably in whatever nine months i guess ever since the surgery was over so from that standpoint you know i'm really healthy and uh so I just had to grab some food. Um, I'm gonna stretch, uh, uh, or I'm gonna take a shower first because we're not allowed to shower on site. <laughs> and then uh, I'm gonna stretch and uh, take a massage and uh, sleep in and then warm up properly tomorrow. Very simple. Simon Cambers, please. Hi Roger. Um, you obviously didn't have much trouble on the court today in terms of the way you played, but it was a nice moment at the, the beginning where you forgot them or you were asking about the time between points and the towels did it feel like you've been away as long as you have hey simon yeah yes i mean it happened a ton of times actually not just once uh i forgot to take the towel i forgot to bring the towel then i the time the shot clock you know is still not something that it's uh embedded in my system i've played too long without the shot clock um and then I also forgot that the warm-up, I guess, was four minutes um, because I was hitting with Dan. And then next thing you know, I know, after 30 seconds, he was already at the net volleying. I was like, why is he hurrying up so much, you know? And then I looked on the shot clock and it was already, you know, three minutes, 10 seconds only left. And I haven't barely done anything yet. So there was a lot of times during the match uh, I had to look at the scoreboard again because... Um, just to make sure is it change of ends time or not because there's a lot going through my mind at the moment about what's my next shot how am i feeling um tactic uh what's dan doing and i think it's almost too much for the brain to take so i i tend to forget a lot of things like you said with the towel or uh and then oh yeah or, or i would ask for the towel <laughs> and obviously i realized they couldn't even bring it to me and uh, because the rules are different nowadays so yes it feels like i've been away for even longer than actually i have been yeah <laughs> Greg, please. 
Roger, on, on the, the uh, point of being away for so long, an off-court question, this is all very new for somebody like you, virtual press conferences. What do you think of them? And uh, what would you prefer, this or the, other, the old style? Um, I think this is probably much easier for a lot of the guys because it's not so... It doesn't feel so personal, you know, to be, uh, you know, in the same room and sitting across from each other and getting asked a tough question. For me, that's not an issue. I've, I've had it, but I, I can imagine for a lot of the guys, this is much easier because you can just say like, ah, give a, a bad answer and you move on and then you don't have to see the person again, you know, and you don't see its reaction or guy rolling its eyes or you have to feel bad about your answer. I think, uh, but as you know, I prefer the old school. I prefer how it was. It's always how it's been. Um, but I've done a lot of uh, conference calls, you know, um, the last uh, year, to be honest. I did a ton of them. So uh, I'm used to it and it seems to work very well. I don't know how it is for you guys, but uh, it's definitely something that's going to probably stick around for a little bit because it seems to work. Um, but I would prefer the, you know, how it used to be and I just think also you guys get a better sense of where we're at, how we're feeling and uh, especially from somebody probably who's uh, not talking so much, you know, you get uh, much more from the expressions, maybe with me it works, I'm not sure how you have to answer that question. Thomas, ESPN. Congratulations, uh, Roger. Uh, I would like to know what was the, the tougher thing that you had to do for this return and also the easier thing, maybe something that you really, really enjoy to do, but that makes possible your return. Um, well, look, uh, it's been a, it's been a long time, and uh, I had to really well, the th like I you see in this match, for instance, you know, um, two hours twenty or maybe more than that. You have to be able to play that. If you cannot play for two and a half hours, you cannot come back. So it's that simple, you know, and uh, I think a lot of questions are being asked and you have to test yourself in practice. And uh, the other thing, obviously, is that um, you, well, you, no, nobody's going to do the running for you. So you have to do it yourself. And I think that in tennis gets underestimated a little bit. I cannot be substituted, you know, uh, only me. I can jump and run and uh, if I don't run, I'm not going to win any more points. You know, it's that simple. You can't just start slapping winners left and right, um, especially as long as I haven't played. So um, overall, I'm really happy, very pleased. Um, there's a lot of things I can still improve on, but overall, I'm incredibly happy how I played. Uh, I said it before the, ma the tournament, you know, regardless of the outcome, if I lose 6-2, 6-2, I am equally happy than sitting here 7-5 in the third. Really, it is um, because it's been over, whatever, 400 days that I haven't been on a tennis court. So... It's been a long time and like I explained before, I don't even remember certain things anymore, you know, with the towels and the rules and all that stuff. So I have to get used to it and that's why it's probably it's nice to play another match tomorrow. A more English, Ben, please. Uh, nice to see you again. Um, I, one thing you did during your time away from tour, which surprised a lot of people, was you one day tweeted that you wanted the ATP and WTA to combine forces uh, sort of out of nowhere and Rafa quickly um, echoed that and, and sort of endorsed that idea. I'm just curious, was that idea out of nowhere and how has that sort of thought uh, gone? How has it endured over the past several months? Is there any progress on that? Do you think it's something that's been possible or is it just where did the idea come from and, and where has it gone? Really is the question. Uh, yes, hey Ben. Um, look, I mean... <laughs> I, I said it, I talked to uh, talked to Andrea about it, I also spoke to Steve Simon and uh, I don't know, for some reason it just felt like they were not quite ready yet as they were focusing so much on the pandemic, which I get. Um, there is um, um, now, what do you say, they're getting together on certain issues as we know. Um, I don't know if it's marketing and other things, you know, they're combining uh, their power, which I think is a good thing. So. I hope I was able to start something, even though I think they were going to come together and get closer to one another anyhow. Um, I still believe it would be beneficial for both tours to be together, uh, in all honesty. Um, but I, I feel like it's been put a little bit on the back burner, you know, which, um, yes, it's a little bit unfortunate maybe, but at the same time, I respect that. Um, but I hope we can take up that conversation again with the ATP and uh, 
and see if it wouldn't be a possibility after all and uh, because it will need some compromises on on either side and i think i i truly believe it would be a great thing for our sport as to english vj please Roger, congratulations on the win. Roger, you did speak about uh, it's better to have some people on the court, the spectators on the court, rather than zero. But how did it actually feel? What was the uh, what was the feeling like? There were spectators, but not full, but they were still there cheering. What was the feeling like? I, I really uh, hardly understood. Martin, did you understand the question? Okay. Maybe try again? Just one more time, BJ. Yes, yes. just l loud enough, uh, please. Roger. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, Roger, the, you did say at the press conference that uh, it's better to have some spectators rather than no spectators at all. Uh, yep. But how did it feel actually on the court? Did yep. you feel them? Uh, what, what was the feeling like? I mean, it felt good, you know. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's not, uh, you know, my last game was 52,000 people in, in Cape Town. I know it's not the measuring stick or the Australian Open walking out to the semis. You know, so when I walked out, it was like, nice to see the people again. It's not as loud as I'm used to maybe sometimes, but I know from TV it could be nothing. So that's why I am incredibly grateful that uh, I was able to play uh, on my return in front of somebody. And the fans were good. Uh, they were into it. Uh, they also, like any tennis match, uh, the spectators always, ex you know, uh, wait for that spark, that moment, that shot. Um, that interaction with you and I feel like as the match wore on and in the breaker they were really getting into it um, and I think there was a lot of um, open questions for everybody to know how am I going to play how am I going to feel how competitive can I be but uh, I, I thought the experience was a good one you know uh, after a while I didn't even feel anymore that there were maybe there was less people than normal in the stadium uh, because you're in the zone and um, it went very well for me and I'm very appreciative to, for everybody who came out to, to support uh, tennis uh, tonight. Last English, Andrew, please. Hey, Roger, congratulations. Uh, hey, thank you. you were talking about the nerves at the beginning and how much you enjoyed it, but then when you get deep in the third set, it is part of you like, okay, now I have to sort of find something now to try to finish the match when it really could have maybe gone either way at the end? I mean, I really thought it could have gone either way. Um, I think Dan had his chances um, and I, like I explained before, I had to change my game a little bit. I had to look for the way forward, um, even though it takes extra effort and extra energy and everything and uh, mental, uh, it can tire you more mentally because you know you have to do it, otherwise it's going to be difficult. And uh, Dan has a very nice way to stay in the point with his slice. Obviously, he, he frustrates a lot of the players that way. Um, but I was hitting the ball, you know, good enough to be dangerous against him, especially off his second serve. If only sometimes off a good return, I could be more dangerous in that second and third shot. If I can improve that, I think maybe I could maybe I could have maybe run away with the match sooner. But uh, credit to him, I thought he served well for for some time and. Uh, um, he produced what I expected him to produce and uh, he maybe come up with some uh, some good shot making at the end and of course I try to also cut down on the length of the rally sometimes but also because I told myself you got to stay aggressive well I started really use the backhand down the line more which I didn't use that much early on and then you know just try to attack his backhand uh, do that with variety and also maybe start using the chip slice again on the return a little bit more because I didn't do that as well in the first one and a half to two sets and I just felt like that was a, a thing I hadn't used yet so I wanted to try it out and it seemed to, to have worked at the very end so I think uh, it was good to have several uh, tools still left in the in the box for the very end of the match. Thank you everyone, we'll continue with Swiss Press in a moment. Alright, take care guys, nice to see you.